What's up everybody, NFX here with another tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to talk about hooking up a MIDI device with FL Studio. Now normally <clears throat> when you get a uh, MIDI device it's going to come in one of two flavors. It's going to come in a USB compatible format or a MIDI uh, cable compatible format. It may be both. Uh, but let's just talk about what each one is. Uh, the first type is a USB type and you'll see that on the screen here I have a picture of a USB connector and what it looks like. I'm sure that most of you have seen this type of connector. Um, most keyboards and mice these days if they're not wireless they have this type of connection. Uh, external drives also use USB printers, use USB and so do MIDI controllers, at least the more modern ones, the ones made in the last several years, have a USB controller. Now you might also have an older keyboard that doesn't have USB, but has these round connectors. And those ones require one of these, a MIDI cable. And a MIDI cable is just what you see here. It's round. It's got five pins inside in a semicircle, and it plugs in to the uh, to the keyboard. Now, if your keyboard doesn't have USB or MIDI, then your keyboard is probably not going to work as a MIDI controller, so you can't use it. Um, but what if your keyboard has one of these types, the old school MIDI cable uh, connections, but your computer doesn't have this type of connection. Some sound cards will come with an adapter for this type. But let's say you have a type that it doesn't doesn't come with it and you need one. Well, you can get an adapter. And uh, <clears throat> here's one such adapter. If you just look for USB to MIDI cable or MIDI to USB cable, you will find uh, a bunch of places online that sell them. But you can see here on one end it has the USB, and here on the other end it has the MIDI. Okay. Now if you get one of these USB to MIDI cables, it's make sure that it comes with a driver disk, either a, a floppy disk or a CD probably. Um, you can also sometimes get the driver from the manufacturer site. So anything that you're connecting that has MIDI on it should have a driver and that that's required that you install that. Now in my case, once I installed my um, my USB keyboard, I, I could go to my control panel here and I could find it in the control panel right here. You see this EMU USB MIDI control panel. That's that was installed there by my my keyboard driver. And uh, if your control panel doesn't look like this, um, maybe it looks like this, or like that, or like that, or like this, it should be listed there. Sometimes uh, on XP you'll see a control panel that looks like this. And in that case, just go to switch to classic view. Now to start the control panel, you can go to start and then control panel, or you can go to start run and type in control and just press enter and that'll bring up your control panel. Um, now I can't speak for every single USB device out there, so it could be that your specific um, device doesn't install into the control panel. Maybe it creates a shortcut on your desktop or in your start menu somewhere that you can run um, the utility that allows you to configure the device. Now the reason why you might want to configure a device is for example if you have a, a drum pad, a MIDI drum pad, you might want to configure the way the keys are mapped out. Um, or you might want to configure certain things about your device like what octave it plays in or the velocity of the keys when you hit them or maybe you need to calibrate the pitch wheel. There's a, a ton of things that you might want to do. Uh, generally they're, they're good to go out of the box but if you don't have some sort of a program to run that will let you 
configure and verify your device is hooked up, you need to go to the manufacturer's site or read your documentation and get to that point. Get to the point where you can, for example, in my case, I can run the the EMU. Uh, in my case, I can run the EMU now. You see how it says it's not installed or make sure that's installed. That's because I have it turned off. And you hear that little ding means it, it just started up. Now if I run this controller again, you're going to see there goes my control panel for the device. Okay, so make sure that you have a driver installed, that your device is turned on, and that you have a valid cable going from your device to the computer. Any one of those things, if not done, will cause your hardware to not operate properly with FL Studio. So that's why I suggest you make sure you can run your configuration utility and verify that all those parts are in place before you go into um, FL Studio. Now I'm going to start FL Studio. <clears throat> and then I'm going to press F10. Um, or you can also go to Options MIDI Settings. And once you're there, you're going to see uh, in, in the input section here, for example, I have the EMU Export 49 listed. But it's not active. You should see an active um, word over in this column over here. The way I make it active is I just click the Enable. I highlight it, click Enable. And now you can see that it's active. Now some MIDI controllers work slightly differently than others and in the controller type drop down you might see your model listed there and if you do you should select it okay because that means it's going to give you the best compatibility with FL Studio if it's not listed here just select generic controller and that's good enough for most operations within FL Studio now that I have the uh, the input enabled I'm going to leave all these other things just the way they are you know auto accept detected controller etc um, and the velocity and the release curves don't worry about all that right now the, right now we're just talking about getting your device up and running now to verify the device is running what I can do is I can go to a channel like my FL keys channel for example and now I'm going to just hit some keys on my MIDI keyboard and you can see that the FL keys plays what I'm playing. Uh, one other thing to be aware of is your sound card latency will matter when you're playing. If I go to Options Audio Settings in FL Studio, um, you can see I, I'm using the ASIO drivers. You should also be using the ASIO drivers. Uh, you might want to use the ASI for all or any other driver that your sound card had installed. Now I have a creative card here so that's why I'm using the creative ASIO. Um, <clears throat> you also should have some type of a control panel here. In this case it says show ASIO panel but it might say buffer settings or some other thing here. When I click that this is where I set my latency. Now by default for example the uh, creative cards come at about a 50 millisecond latency. I'm going to increase it just to 100 just for a quick demo. Um, and I'm going to close this and go back to FL keys. Now I'm just going to count 1, 2, 3, 4 and when I do that I'm going to hit a key. When I say 1 I'm going to press a key on my keyboard. When I say 2 I'm going to press a key when I say 3 and 4, I'm going to also press a key at the exact same time I say those numbers. And you're going to hear that there's a delay between when I say the number and when you hear the sound. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so there's a slight delay. And it makes playing back with uh, a beat that you have maybe looping in the background and you're trying to come up with a part, it will make it very difficult to play because there's going to be a delay in your playing. So that's why you want to make sure, again, Options Audio Settings. 
you have a very low latency here. I like mine at 7 because any lower than that, my system, the sound might crackle a little bit. Um, and this is important. You've got to find the right balance. Now, you, you can, what you should do is go as low as you can. And if you notice your sound crackling, just bump it up a notch. And if it still crackles, bump it up a notch. The other thing you can look for, like I'm going to set it to one millisecond. And uh, you see this underruns here. If I hit play, I'm not getting any underruns right now. But you can hear probably a little bit of crackling in here. But all I have is a simple drum beat going. So I'm going to just start hitting some keys. So you can hear this kind of crackly. And look, now I have four underruns. So I'm going to want to make sure to, that I increase that. That's not going to be good for me. So again, I like mine at 7. Anything under 10 is, is, is good. Um, but the lower you can go and have it still sound good, um, the better. So I'm going to put mine back at 7, and, uh, and I'm going to close this up. Okay, now when I play, I don't really have any crackles. I can hear a slight crackle from the snare right there. That little click was playing, but that's not the same thing as we heard earlier. But anyway, so make sure, just to, just to wrap up, because that's really all there is to getting your MIDI controller hooked up. Um, make sure you have your drivers hooked up. Make sure your device is powered on. Make sure that you have a cable connecting the device to the computer. I talked about the different types of connectors that you might need to, to get or have. Um, make sure that all that's working before you start FL Studio. You might start FL Studio, then turn on your device, and FL Studio won't see it. You have to have the device on when you start FL Studio. So just exit FL Studio and restart it if you forget to turn on your MIDI device. Uh, once you have that going, it's just a matter of going to the channel that you want to play, whether it's a hi-hat or the kick. And what you want to do is understand that middle C on your keyboard, the middle octave C is the key that controls the default sample. Um, in this case, let's say I want to do, do my hi-hat, but if I played in the wrong octave, or maybe too high, it doesn't sound right. So you got to remember, middle C. That's for your basic samples. For your things like your keyboard, like your FL keys, or your contact, or your albino, or whatever, plug in, you know, an instrument, you can just play wherever you need to play on the keyboard and that, and that will work. Um, that's really all there is to it. Um, I'm surprised it took me 13 minutes to even talk about it, but I tried to be uh, detailed enough that if you were having a problem, I would cover it at least a little bit. So enjoy the tutorial. Hopefully it'll get you to the next level in your production. And this is NFX saying, I'll catch you guys in the next